Right, good evening everyone. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name's Rob. I'm not Rob Caporetto, my name's Rob Amos. I actually get that one a lot. Uh, tonight I wanted to go through a couple of things. One of the projects that I've been working on with a custom navigation controller, and at the same time there's been a few talks in the past few months, um, or several months, that have mentioned the or extolled the virtues of constraints and auto layout. They haven't really touched too much though on the basics of constraints and actually building constraints and using auto layout in code, which a lot of the time can actually be a lot quicker than Xcode, uh, the interface builder. Second part then is will be about pretty much a code walkthrough on building a custom navigation controller using container views. Um, and yeah, so we'll dive straight into a demo of an app that I've been building. Now, it's still early stages. It is a um, how do I put this? It's pretty much a, a play app. Um, my wife is an amateur photographer, and she has been looking at redoing her website recently. And I thought that sounds like a great idea for an app. Why not? Um, given that I can do what I want with it, it's pretty much targeted as iOS six plus, which means I can play with storyboards. <coughs> particularly auto layout I was looking at focusing on. At this stage it probably looks like it's going to be iOS 7 only because I really don't have any iOS 6 devices to test on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the basics of this app and where it differs from a standard UI navigation controller is that the, the content view in the middle part there will become the navigation view at the next step. So. On this screen is the general photo view, um, a layout of an album that my wife has put together with a collection view, which was the original content view, which then becomes the navigation bar at the top. And then another, obviously another collection view at the bottom, which actually has the album contents. Selecting a photo, for example, will move that original collection view to the navigation view at the top, allowing you to switch back and forth, pick photos, so on and so forth. and stepping back and forth will bring them further up and down the navigation stack. So that's pretty much it for the demo. And if, but as a sidebar, if anybody has ex lots of experience with UI collection views, transitioning between collection view layouts and, and animation, come find me after this, because I'm having a lot of trouble as soon as you set the offset, the content offset above zero. Are you doing iOS 7? Uh, I did originally. Um, they don't work with a content offset above zero. So I had to roll my own, which was working until the latest beta. And in WWDC, they have a transition. They, yes, that, that does, it does work as long as the content offset is zero. So as soon as it's not, you get a lot of um, <coughs> offset problems. So for example, if I were to pick a photo that's further down, it works fine going one way, but as soon as you come back the other way, content offset at the top there will end up being the same width as the original button height at the top. So the, the built-in transition stuff is good for basics, but doesn't work in this case. But that's a bit, of, a bit off, top, off topic. So is that still using navigation controller or are you rolling your own nav? I'm rolling my own nav based on um, container views, which I'll step through in a minute. It's, it's changing from beta to beta, so I'm leaving it aside for the moment. And um, I want to actually focus on building the rest of the app rather than screwing around with, with UI collection views for three weeks, which I've have done. So. The problem will be, though, as soon as it goes GM, like getting anything fixed, if it's still busted, it's going to be like impossible. I've got a few radars like left over. Um, I have them in there already, um, but I'm moving on to other things and not wasting my time anymore, to be honest. Okay, so as I mentioned, one thing I wanted to do was go back and do a very look at the basics of what auto layout is <coughs> and the best way to use it. I mean, there's a few demos that we've had that did it through Interface Builder, um, which is functional for the most part now. So 
constraints as they are are very simple relationships between two, two attributes of views for the most part. What you actually do under the hood is you need to provide enough information for auto layout to be able to calculate the, the origin and the size of each view so that it can actually lay it out on its own. And that you need to do both axis, so the size, the origin and the size, and you need to do both axis or it will not play nice. Back in Xcode 4 days, it was pretty much unusable. I mean, I spent a long time stuffing around with it trying to actually get it to work. Most of the time, the automatic constraints just kept overriding anything that you would try and do yourself. There, you spend enough time with it and you learn there's an order of operations. You need to, to set certain constraints before others to prevent them from overriding. It's much, much better in Xcode 5. Um, I've still spent a lot of time fighting with conflicts though. Um, and a lot of that comes down to the auto resizing masks as well. But there is nothing stopping you from building constraints in code. And a lot of the time, building constraints in code can be faster, much faster, and much more under your control. It's not always the easiest way to do it, but sometimes it is. So the different attributes for constraints, there are 11 of them um, for each view. There's the typical top and bottom, left and right constraints. So you can set a constraint on a, a view to a subview or any other view or any other attribute that you want to connect. You can do the center alignment, obviously. The baseline for each cell, which comes up. The width and the height. To do the baseline, you the in your UI view subview, you just implement a baseline offset from bottom return whatever the offset should be, and that will actually set the attribute and auto layout against that constraint. The other one is the test, the, the leading and the trailing one, which is based on the text direction. So for most of us with who speak English and have English as a first language or as the general um, user interface language, the leading and the trailing is usually equal to the left and right bounds. If you, especially if you localize your apps and you have support text that runs right to left, um, the leading and trailing bounds will change to be right and then left. So as a brief example of setting constraints in code, typically every UI view you can set add constraint on. And there is a nice little static method there that Apple makes available to initialize constraint. In this one, if we set so we say NS layout constraint, constraint with item, and the item is the one that you want to change or you want to set the rule on. The attribute in this case would be NS layout attribute left, so the left boundary of that view. <coughs> How we want to relate it to the second item, so I'm saying it equal in this case to the super view, as you can see on the right there. The, the multiplier and the constant come in the, as part of the equation for calculating it, the multiplier runs against the, the attribute value on, from the right hand side, so in this case the super view. So we're saying whatever the value of the left bounds of the, the super view times it by 1, because we want it to be equal. If you want it to be double, you say 1.5. And then you add the constant at the end. So if you were to actually run that, your left bound moves to the left. Similarly, you set, you can set, do exactly the same with the right attribute, make right to right, and then logically, everyone's mentioning me on Twitter, I'm going crazy. Logically, the top and the bottom is the same. So that can actually get quite verbose if you step through, especially if you want to add attributes for every single um, bounds or your width and height or anything like that. Apple does provide the visual formatting model. So you can specify the whole thing in two, two easy calls. You add constraints, the NS layout constraints, and don't do what I did the first time through when I saw add constraints is an, accepts an NS array, and so I, I made an array of constraints manually. Um, 
the constraints with visual format will translate the visual format that we have there, um, in which case we've got the, the pipe symbol symbolizes the super view or the view that you are adding the constraints to. No, it's the super view, isn't it? Yeah, the super view of the, the target view. We're not specifying any um, layout options in this one or any constant metrics. If you don't want to hard code your values in, your, your width, for example, you can pass in an, a, a dictionary of constants. And then the bottom, at the bottom there, we pass in a dictionary of views. And the, the key of your the dictionary should match the key that you've used in your visual format. And then obviously the value is the reference to the UI view. Uh, Apple provides a nice macro to do that all for you, assuming that the the local one is the same name as the the key. Yeah. Is the top one supposed to have page column? It's optional. It's, it is optional. Yeah. So it's it's assumed to be horizontal if it's not specified. <coughs> you can specify it manually, um, and a lot of the dumps you get back from Apple will always come with a H colon in front of it. Uh, as we get as I said there, the, the V at the bottom indicates you're working on the on the vertical axis. Um, otherwise, it's assumed horizontal. Matt? The uh, K nil options, yep. how does that sort of differ from just putting zero or something there? You want to answer that, all? With the uh, options and K nil options. The K nil options is just an enum. It's just, um, depending, depending, depending on your compiler's warning settings, it may, <laughs> it may complain that zero is not a valid, option, a valid value. Yep. So the Kenyal options is just of the right type. You shouldn't okay. assume that enum value is zero. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, also, yeah. that's true. Okay, so the other part of that is that you always need to make sure that you supply enough information for it to calculate the exact the origin and the size. If you don't, it can infer a lot of that from the existing frame of the view that you're working on. So for example, you can set the width and the height equal to the super view in this one. But if you actually run that with a, a, a zero rec frame to start with, it will center it on the, on the zero axis and you end up with a view that's skewed. So you do need to provide the, the origin values as well or enough information for it to calculate an origin from given your size that's already there. So this is something that I was playing around with a little while ago. Yep. Some, another thing to note is to always, when you're specifying constraints in code, yep. always, unless you want the behavior that comes with auto resize. Marks, yep, I've got that a bit further on. Yeah, okay. anyway. No, that just generally fucks you up. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is a, an example if I wanted to replicate the, a UI tab bar um, with the centered view. I first tried to do this back in Xcode 4.5, running iOS 6. I got about six hours into the exercise and gave up. Its uh, interface builder just really did not want to apply the constraints without obliterating all the other constraints at the same time. Just for the fun of it, when I was building the app, um, the very first screen is a UI tab bar with buttons that do exactly this. Uh, implementing that in Xcode 5 um, took probably an hour, hour and 15 minutes or so. Mostly it, the constraints went in nicely, but then it was fighting with the conflicts that Interface Builder likes to warn you about over and over and over again. And a lot of that came down to dealing with the auto resizing mask. As an exercise today, I did this uh, this afternoon, about two o'clock, in about 15 minutes. So in this case, we've set the, the visual format constraints. Did you scraping an HTML page? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. That's like a past life. Um, so in this case, all we need to do is, from left to right, you can specify the, the origins just by sitting them next to each other. If you want to apply the default um, gap between, according to the human interface guidelines, which is usually about eight pixels, you just leave a single, single dash. 
In this case, I've said that from the super view on the left hand side, the spacer should be flush against the super view. The red view, which is the yellow, the red box, should be flush against the, the spacer with a width of 50 pixels, or 50 points, sorry. There should be a 50 point gap between the red and the blue, and then so on all the way through to the end. The purple one should be flush against the second spacer. The second spacer's width should be equal to the first spacer's width, and then that should sit flush against the super view. And then obviously the second part at the bottom here is setting the, the width and the height. Just the width? Just the height. Ah, sorry. So the, the first line will set your horizontal axis only. You still need to lay out the vertical axis, otherwise, in my case, I was initializing all of my, um, my views with CG Rec 0, in which case it would have set it flush along the, the top of the, the super view. So I set the, the height attributes on the bottom for each of the, the boxes. Doesn't matter about the spaces because they're hidden anyway. And then we set the NS layout attribute center Y to equal this one in the super view. Yeah. So space one and space two in this example are UI views? Yes. So they're just empty UI views with that are set to hidden. Yep, so the other way of doing that, yep. if this is one of the options that you can, can go this, I think, I'm not sure if it's an iOS 7 one, in, when you specify UI tab bar, you can either center your tabs or you can spread them. So to center them, it's doing that. If you want to spread them, um, this took all of three minutes, copying and pasting the first example, setting the spaces, making all the button widths equal to spaces, um, and you have... You actually need the spaces. Made out. Like you can, you can do these sorts of layouts without hidden views. True, but you need to specify a constant. You have to the constant. Yes. yes. Yeah. Can you do that with a metric? Yeah, but it still, it still comes in as, as a constant. Yeah. But you've got to calculate that. That's right, you can't, you can't let auto layout calculate that for you. Yeah. Just trying to think how I did it. I've built a tab bar and reveal with auto layout. Just centered three, like more four yep. tabs, right? I didn't need spaces, I can't remember how I did it. But anyway, mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> <laughs> when you remember, post them on the mailing list. <laughs> I think it was like centering, like arranging the centermost element. And then spreading out, then but then you've got the fixed width side. between your buttons. There's a way to. Yeah, it was a fixed yep. fix width between the, between the buttons. Yep. But yeah, just yeah, if you do a fixed width between the, the buttons, you don't need the spaces in the middle. And then, yeah, if you, can, if you make it in a container, you can then center the two of them and cause the two in the center. Yeah, you're all right. <laughs> so, just as another example, <laughs> the same boxes again, in this case, this is a demonstration of the setting an aspect ratio on the, on the boxes. So, each of the actual buttons themselves are 3 to 2 like a photo. The only constant value in there is that the height of the, the boxes themselves is 50 points. I've never actually used this in production, this was just something I was playing around with this <coughs> afternoon. I like that there's a for loop applying that to all of those views. When I did it through the first time it was like 16 lines, I'm like I'm not going to get this in a slide. Compacted it down. Yeah. Did you expect Interface Builder to be able to do this for you graphically? You can in Xcode 5. Um, you might be fighting with no, no, the things for it, but you can, yes. Irrespective of the fact that they didn't implement it properly, but you know, given your experience with doing this in code or in Interface Builder, um, do you think this is, in general, an uh. easier way to, to do it than playing with uh, easier, maybe not. Um, once you've learnt it, yes it is. There, there is a bit more of a learning curve involved in, in going this way and you will find that it gets very complicated very fast and it's more importantly it gets very verbose very fast and you end up with hundreds of lines of setting constraints all around the place. Yeah, though I found that with, usually in your application you come up with certain idioms, like yep. a user interface idiom. 
and those often can be um, factored into like helpers. So you can get rid of a lot of the verbosity by just saying, by you know, refactoring the code basically say, oh well, this is a set of constraints that I'm going to consistently apply to the top of the set of views, make that into a helper yep. category or something on NS uh, loud constraint. Um, and then it makes the, the code uh, a lot Much simpler, yep. yeah. Rob, did you ever think that just writing the layout code manually would be easy in less code? Um, no. Not initially, no. Um, it, it does get, for some of them, it does get a lot less code. Did you ever do layouts manually previously, or did you always use string constructs? Uh, no, I used to do all my bounds calculations myself, for the most part. Um, you still have to a lot of the time. The problem is more of um, getting that layout code to interact cleanly with the layout. Yeah. Yep. That becomes a problem. So it's, it's more, it's easier, rather than fighting the system, it's kind of, just better to adopt the system yeah. and adapt to And all of the problems that it brings with it. Yeah. It can be hard to debug, and it can be hard to work out what you've got wrong and yep. it's not doing what you want. Very much so. So just as a recap of that, we always need to supply enough constraints to calculate the origin sign on both axes, or we end up with weird inherited behaviours from the existing frames. Where possible, you said you should, you should, um, and I haven't in my example or my walkthrough that um, you should implement it in update view constraints, your subclass, your UI view subclass. And although they supposedly they supposedly say that constraints do degrade gracefully, most of the time it doesn't, unless you've designed it to degrade gracefully by setting a priority on each of your views on each of your constraints. So the next part, the, the thing that I really wanted to try with, with this app was going fully auto layout, abandoning everything that came before it and just doing auto layout. And I found it is, it is possible, um, it can be painful using some of the UI kit provided views. You need to be prepared to call the set translates auto resizing mask into constraints no on every single view that you initialize. Otherwise you end up with weird behaviors and a lot of debug print out to your console, um, and the first line you see at the bottom is the translated constraint. So just, just on that, yep. what, what I did to, help my, to make my life easier, the bit where you set up that um, array of all of the views you're going to pass in, I actually made a helper for that yep. that would go through and set that on every single one that was in that array so that I didn't forget. Yep. I was a consumer of that bit of code, and it was very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> the, and, and the bottom one is, be prepared to keep a lot of references to your constraints, especially if you want to be able to modify them later on. Because once you throw them into auto layout, you will not get them back out again, unless you're using the debug methods that Apple provides. But there's a nice warning at the bottom of that that says they will not allow shipping apps with using the debug code. Awesome. Yeah. About just um, whenever you call update um, constraints to remove all of your constraints. And start again. Yep, that's certainly another way. Um, if, especially if you want to dive into animating your constraints, though, it's usually a lot quicker if you keep the constraint around and change the constant value. Okay, so now we get out of constraints and go into using constraints for a custom navigation controller. So if you were here last month, you might recognize this picture from Matt's talk. And one of the things that building a custom navigation controller has taught me is a lot of appreciation for the built-in UI navigation controller. It's, it's actually pretty simple to implement your own one using container views, um, but there is a lot of polish that goes into the existing one that's really hard to actually replicate nicely. So what I was doing, aiming to do with my custom navigation controller was to build, you build them using a container views, and for the most part you transition using the transition from view controller to view controller with your animation options. In my case, that wasn't going to work. Um, if you read the manual for the reference for that method, it tells you at the bottom that it will remove the 
the view from the from view controller, it will remove it from your view stack once the animation completes. Obviously, in my case, I need to keep the previous view around, so that wasn't going to work. So we had to build my own. Now, I looked around a lot. I spent probably three hours researching this, um, and I couldn't find anybody that had done this type of navigation paradigm before. Um, so without any naming references, I've called it cascading navigation. So if we go back to the photo view that's there, it's really split into the two, the existing content view, which is in your on top of the view, the navigation stack, and the view that's at n minus two, where n is obviously the, the length of the navigation stack, is the navigation view that's at the top. And the goal with animating all of this is that when you touch the item, the previous one resizes into the navigation view, previous navigation view disappears off the top, and the existing content view slides up to reveal the new content view. So when you actually add it to the top of the navigation stack, it goes to the bottom of the view hierarchy. So it's dubbed DS Cascade Navigation Controller. I will post the source, probably not after this, because it's still not tested properly, and I haven't tested on the iPhone yet. Um, the goal was to get as close to UI Navigation Controller as practical, um, support segs in storyboards, so that you can actually still set segs between your views um, to push and pop off the navigation stack, and to use fully go fully auto layout. And on that note, Xcode time. And I like that I can use mission control on this monitor, but not that one. Okay. So for most of the rest of this will be a code walkthrough. So this is the, the header file for DS Cascading Navigation Controller. Um, typically, if you're initializing it from code, we need the two views. Um, if you pass in just a navigation view, obviously, that's not going to look real good. So we initialize it with both views. The rest of this you will look familiar if you've read the API docs for UI navigation controller. It's pretty much the same, except the, the protocol that we pass through for those. This is going to be fun from here. Okay. Yep. So the very first thing we do in it is get rid of our translating order resizing masks. Um, that becomes a common theme. As you said, you can provide us to help us to do that. You're going to load your view right there. Uh, yes. Which is not standard, but I don't know. Fair point. You can refactor that. I see that you can synthesize your variables. Oh, hey. just offered to help me. Uh, yeah. I think you did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've written a few custom view controller things. So for the most part, um, this obviously still needs a bit of work at the moment. I only support the two, the two view, con view controllers being set. And we set the one at n minus two to the navigation view. I'm trying to remember how I did this now. Yep, so we, and this is where the fun stuff comes in. So a lot of the time in this case, Navigation control, blah blah blah. Um, the first thing we need to do is create a wrapper around the your content view, and that's to support the the back button. Um, obviously, we don't want to go embedding stuff inside the content view because then you can't control how it looks. The standard stuff that Matt walked through last week. Um, you add it to the you add your child view controller to the container view. Do, 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 do. If we are the, the root view controller, we don't display the button, the back button, obviously. But here is where we deal with all of the auto layout. Or not. The background, da da da. da. And that's pretty straightforward. Ah, here we go.
Okay, so for the most part, all we do in this case is when we add it to the navigation stack, we need to add the view into the view hierarchy. And then we, f we full screen it pretty much um, on the horizontal axis. We set the left and right bounds to be the full width. And then we add a constraint at the top. If it's the navigation view, we bind it to the top of the, the navigation view itself, or on top of the screen in this case. And we keep a reference. So the reason I wrap the view, one of the other reasons is to provide references to the constraints that I know I'll need to manipulate later on. So we keep a reference to the top constraint around. Um, as well, the height constraint, which at the, this point is just a define. So all we need for that view is to set the horizontal, um, bind it to the top of the screen, and then set the height, which is enough to get it to, to lay out where it needs to go. Similarly, the, if we lay it out as the content view, um, depending on if it's a full screen content view or not. Did I do that? Yeah, it's the next method. We do the same thing. We set the full width of the screen, um, lay out the top, set top constraint, attribute view to self.view. Yep. So what I do in this case is I bind it to the top of the top of the screen, offset by the, the height of the navigation bar. And I do that instead of um, binding it to the bottom axis of the navigation bar. Um, it really comes down to your the way you want to do your animations. In this case, I wanted it to pull up to reveal the other one. If I wanted it to slide in from the bottom of the screen, you can bind it to the bottom of the existing view. Um, but because it needs to be there at the same time as the existing view, you need to bind it at a different location. Ditto, we bind it to the, the bottom of the screen. We relay it out. And the full screen one is the same thing, but we don't offset it from the top of the navigation view. Question, Rob. Yep. Uh, why are you um, forcing the views to lay out there rather than just telling them to lay out later? Uh, this, this is the first run through. This is more about me learning auto layout than anything else. Well, it's just like, like layout, layout if needed. Yep. It's going to lay out. It's going to actually reposition all the views. This is often um, called from within animations as well. Right. Okay. We don't have the bottom of the... No. So where things get interesting is pushing, being able to push and pop from the view controller stack. So on the same note as the normal UI view controller, if we push a view controller onto the stack and we animate it, we grab a whole bunch of references to the existing stuff. We find our wrapped subview containing the view that we've supplied, add the new view controller to the view, and then we actually animate the, the change. Um, first thing we do is if the old view controller has implemented the wheel transition to navigation content, navigation view control. Um, we call that. We bring the view to the front so that we can actually transition it nicely. We tell the, the wrapped view to change into the navigation view um, so that it can actually reveal the back button. That's usually with a width of zero pixels. And then what we do to actually animate the transition from the content view to the navigation view is to remove the, the height constraint, or we add a height constraint, sorry, because um, we want to move it from the full screen. We want to set it to height of 88 pixels in this case, or 88 points. Um, so we set the height constraint, and then we, man, I haven't read this code in a few weeks. Look on there, view, blah, blah, blah. We, oh, that's right, we remove the, the binding to the bottom of the screen. Um, obviously, you can't have a, a height constraint, have it bound to the top of the screen and bottom of the screen at the same time. Um, auto layout will do its nut and dump everything to the console. 
And the other thing we do is set the, the constant off the top. So when we laid it out, we set the, we bound the top of that view, the content view, to the top of the screen with an offset. The constant value was set to the height. In this case, setting the constant to zero will bring it up to the top of the screen. And again, then we just lay it out. To pop it, we do almost the same thing in reverse. Um, we tell the view that's uh, the view controller that's about to be removed that. Sorry, we don't tell the view controller it's about to be removed. We tell the existing navigation view um, that it's about to become the, the content view. We reset the, the, cons the constant for the top constraint down to the bottom, uh, to the height of the navigation bar. We move the new, the existing previous navigation controller that went off the top back into view. And then we rebind the content view to the bottom of the screen. And for the most part, um, once we've done that, obviously we remove the existing view that was just popped off, or however many there were at the time. And for the most part, that's all I've got for today. You saw the, the app at the start. So... Any questions for him? Just a comment, Rob. Um, yep. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it short, Oliver. Uh, oh, it's just... It's just um... Itty bitty bad. No, no, no. no it's not like that. Like, uh, the, in the you can control, control a containment API, there's... Like, if you don't use transition yep. uh, from view control to view controller, um, there's kind of magic happens here in the containment API, where yep. when you're adding and removing views from the view hierarchy, it magically calls your view controllers, view to appear, view to disappear. Yep. Um, and when you're doing, what well, in my experience, when you're doing more custom view controllers, um, you don't want that magic to happen here. Um, you want it to happen slightly afterwards. Yep. Um, or before or whatever. And so, um, just to be in control of kind of the life cycle events of like when view did appear, or view will appear, get called, um, relative to where your containment your containing view controller is doing stuff, or yep. you might have, as you have custom protocol, inform protocol where you're calling sort of sub, you know, like you will move the content view controller or whatever. Yep. Um, so it's best to actually explicitly begin transition and end transition. Yep. Um, that's my experience anyway. Yep, it's certainly available. Yeah. Do, you have any, do you have any tips for getting rid of the dreaded auto layout exceptions? that eventually occur, that, you know, you've got... They didn't crash your app. Yeah, the, when they suppose, supposedly degrade gracefully um, by crashing your app, pretty much. The, the one I found that always comes through is the setting the translates or every size mask into constraints. Um, beyond that, if you actually let... The interface builder in Xcode 5 is usually pretty good at detecting conflicts up front. Um, if you're doing it in code, you're on your own. There are, Apple has added a whole bunch of debug methods to get the constraints back out of auto layout. Um, but as I mentioned, you can't ship production code with those. Yeah, you can, I, can, I haven't done any auto layout on iOS, only on macOS. Um, are there any, is there ways of visualizing the constraints on iOS? Because on the, on, on the Mac, if you, if you, um, mm. part, you, you can do it in code um, manually, or you can just set an option on, like, um, when you're invoking your app on the command line or in your debugger or whatever to get it to, um, it basically draws a big purple window border and then draws over the top, like where the layout, where the constraints are and which ones are in conflict. Someone should build an app for that, Oliver. <laughs> 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 I've been working on that. Um, I agree. But you could test your layout on a, on a uh -huh. scratch, like um, OS X app. Uh, yeah, you could. Actually, speaking of Mac OS apps on auto layout, um, yeah, turning off the translation 
uh, is like a this do that. Like it should be off by default, in my opinion. There, yeah, there are some where it doesn't play nicely, particularly UI scroll views. Right. Um, yeah. If you read the release notes for, I, for the iOS 6 release, um, there's a nice boot note which explains or tries to explain how UI scroll view is unique in how it interacts with auto layout. Um, that's part of the problems that I've had. So. Sorry? Oh, no, scroll views don't respond to auto layout. So. Yeah. Does, does anybody else have the same problem? They, um, as, as I mentioned, there is a note there that says um, how it behaves differently. It's I mean, kind of hard to decipher. So, reasonable time? We're always pretty good at that. On Mac OS, I've found that in certain cases, not what happen all the time, but basically, if you use, um, if you just let auto, if you're just using auto resource masks and just yep. letting auto layout translate them, uh, you end up with degeneration where the frames just keep on shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Yep. And shrinking. Um, Same so, thing happens in iOS. Right. Yeah, so just fucking turn them off. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a couple of cases where you still have to go back to calculating things manually, particularly with things like collection views, stuff like that. They don't play very nicely with auto layout. I think that's part of the problems that I've been having. Any other questions? I was going to ask, um, have you had much experience with um, labels and, um, and constraints, with applying them to labels and multi-line, special multi-line labels? No, I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. Sounds like it's going to be fun, I guess. <laughs> Have you had to use constraint priorities much? Um, not really. Um, I mean, I found that most of the time, especially in iOS, there's not really a lot of necess the need to degrade. Um, you only really support two orientations, portrait and landscape. Um, the, the windows themselves don't resize, so no, I haven't. I haven't found I've been using much. No. It's definitely helpful on the Mac. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, this is more of a comment. Um, one of the things I found is if your um, sort of visual layout format is causing a lot of conflict, probably best to just be a bit more verbose and actually do it between the different views, so yep. use the other format. Yep, go back, so, back yeah. to manual. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Thanks,